everybody video here for you today ancient history news i believe this is the 33rd edition where i take a look at five ancient history news stories and put them into one video haven't made a video for about a week got all settled into our new place over the past five days but the first story let's go down to alexandria or what's just off the coast here the underwater city of Heracleion discovered right in this area right down here Here's a story from just a couple days ago. I found this on a few different websites. It says shipwreck found at Egypt's submerged site of Thonis Heraklion. And here is a diver on this ancient ship here. It says according to Reuters, a team of Egyptian and French researchers found the wreckage of an ancient military vessel at the site of Thonis Heraklion, a now submerged city along Egypt's Mediterranean coastline that once controlled the mouth of the western branch of the Nile River. The 80-foot ship had a flat bottom, oars, and a large sail. When the city's huge temple of a moon collapsed in the 2nd century BC, it sank the vessel, which was moored nearby. The, the researchers also identified a funerary area dated to the 4th century BC, where Greek merchants were buried in their own sanctuaries near the temple of a moon. So that is a pretty interesting find, and who knows what else they'll find under the waters here just off of Alexandria. Here's a look at some of the artifacts the divers uncovered. It says this discovery beautifully illustrates the presence of the Greek merchants who lived in that city. It says the Greek ship is one of only two known surviving vessels of its kind. There was another one found off the coast of Sicily and that dated to 235 BC. It says, prior to the founding of Alexandria by Alexander the Great, Thonis Reclion was the largest port city in Egypt, controlling the entrance to the country at the mouth of the western branch of the Nile River. The city was destroyed by earthquakes and sunk beneath the waves of the Mediterranean in the 8th century. And it was rediscovered by Frank Godillo's team in 1999. But that's an interesting find for sure, made off the coast of Egypt. Now we can explain pretty logically how the ruins of Heraklion ended up in shallow water off the coast here, but let me remind you of a video I made a couple years ago. This is called Heraklion, Egypt and the Lost 12,000 year old underwater city. Graham Hancock dove about five kilometers offshore and the person who took him diving out here took him over these large blocks. Are those man-made or natural? But found five kilometers from shore that appears pretty mysterious. They almost look like the stones you see off Bimini, but those are pretty unexplainable, found way off the coast here. Does that come from another time? Well, I'm not so sure. Here's a look at a couple artifacts found in the shipwreck, some kind of gold figurine there. I'm not sure if that is an anchor or what that is, but a pretty interesting story. Pretty cool artifacts found. Ancient shipwreck found off Egypt. Let's move on. Next story, let's go down to Cyprus. This is a place I covered in a video about a week and a half ago. Ancient ruins on the island, but they are turning some underwater ruins into kind of a diving museum. And I believe it's located right down here. Here's a story that came out about three days ago. Ancient harbor of Amathus or Amathus in Cyprus to open for diving enthusiasts. And there you see some pretty impressive stonework found beneath the waves here. I'll just read a little here. It said that Demetrius, the besieger, a warrior king, and one of Alexander the Great's successors built a harbor on Cyprus' south coast 2,400 years ago to thwart any naval invasion from the rulers of Egypt. Ptolemy I, another of Alexander's heirs, French archaeologists who initially studied the ancient harbor of Amethyst believe it to be an incomplete military fortification work with three piers of which would have accommodated the best of the ancient world's naval ships ready to repel an attacking force, but that is pretty cool. Some looks underwater here off the coast of Cyprus. Here are some looks at these underwater ruins turned into a diving museum. Rows of stones, more stonework in not too deep water. Here are some above ground ruins found just off the coast. But this ancient harbor looks like a pretty fascinating place to dive. Let's move on. Ancient Cyprus is pretty fascinating, and I haven't done a lecture series video for a long time. I did a few of those last winter and spring, but I think I'm gonna have a lecture coming up on some pretty cool research coming up from Cyprus. 
And that should be coming up maybe even later on tonight. Next story, let's go down to Denmark. And I have enough problems pronouncing English things, so maybe some of you from this part of the world can tell me how this lake is pronounced. I want to say Bowling Lake, but this is on the Jutland Peninsula. And there was a discovery made down here and some current research done on it. And I believe this discovery was made right down in this area, right down here. This is physics.org. This story just came out today. Most detailed study to date of gut contents of Tolun Mand. And here is the area he was discovered near the lake. But they did some pretty intensive studies on what was in this man's stomach upon his death. Kind of a gruesome story, but one that really gives out a lot of information. It says a team of researchers from Denmark's museum in Silkeborg has conducted the most detailed study to date of Tolu Man's stomach and intestinal contents. In their paper published in the journal Antiquity, the group describes their in-depth study of the famous bog body. This body was discovered in a bog. And I think they have a map right there of the location. He was discovered in 1950. They dated him to 2400 years ago period known as the pre-Roman Iron Age period. Just reading here it says prior research has shown that Tola Man was approximately 40 years old when he was killed for unknown reasons and that he was buried in the bog which preserved his body for more than 2,000 years. His gut contents researchers found evidence of porridge made up mostly of barley. It also contained flax and seeds and a small amount of fish. The meal had been cooked in a clay pot and was slightly burned before it was saved. The researchers note that the porridge was so well preserved that they could build a recipe from it if they so desired. But there is microscopic contents of what was in this man's stomach. Here are some more pics coming from the research they did. It says they also found that Tolan man had been infested with tapeworms along with other intestinal worms and their eggs. They suggest that he likely picked up such parasites by consuming raw or undercooked meat and perhaps drinking water from a well that was not entirely clean. They also suggest that Tola Man might have been the victim of human sacrifice ritual or he might simply have been caught doing something his peers viewed as punishable by hanging. But that is some in-depth research done on a bog body found that was about 2400 years old. Let's move on. Next story, let's go down to Germany. A cave down here. Some pretty cool finds. This is known as Unicorn Cave, but the cave has a name to it. Here is the entrance to the cave. A story came out not long ago. An interesting find that dates back about 50,000 years. Here is a story that came out a little over a week ago. A Neanderthal carved a geometric design in a bone 51,000 years ago. Here's more evidence that Neanderthals were as creative and cultured as us. And it says, During the Middle Ages, people ventured into the cave, now called Einhorn Hole, to collect unicorn bones. It's tempting to wonder whether those medieval sifted hunters would be disappointed or fascinated to learn that the bones they unearthed from the cave actually belong to ancient bison, deer, cave lions, bears, and other animals that died 50,000 years ago. Archaeologists began excavating the cave in 2017 while cleaning and sorting their trove of non-unicorn bones. They discovered the handiwork of long-dead Neanderthal artisan. It says around 51,000 years ago, someone carved a geometric design into the second phalanx or toe of a giant deer. And here is an artist's rendition of a giant deer that lived in the area around 50,000 years ago. It says the carver was almost certainly a Neanderthal based on the bones radiocarbon dated age and because no one else but Neanderthal lived in Europe until around 45,000 years ago. It says each line in the relatively simple pattern took several steps about 10 minutes to carve. The whole pattern represents about 1.5 hours of work not counting prep time. You would have needed sharp flints. It says, summing all this up, the Neanderthal who etched this pattern into deer bone 51,000 years ago wasn't just making an idle doodle. This was a legitimate project. It took imagination to plan the design and to figure out the individual lines would add up to a more complex pattern. It took resources and planning to assemble the tools, and it took time and effort to actually carve the pattern. But what did it all mean? Well, you can leave your thoughts below. 
but there was something pretty important to somebody here that they took time to carve this let's move on final story let's go to ancient america i was sent this story by a few people who live in the twin cities we are going down to indian mounds regional park right here on the bluff overlooking the mississippi but you can get a look at a few of the mounds here from overhead let's go down and take a peek here are the remaining mounds at the park originally there was at least 30 mounds here people were buried in here but a lot of these mounds got taken out so the people down here could have a better view of the river i haven't covered these mounds for quite a while and they are built on a bluff and there is a cave right down here also i think it's called carver's cave maybe some of my viewers in the twin cities can let me know if that is correct but a story just came out on this ancient site here here's a story that came out a few days ago i want to thank the people who sent me this minnesota park recognized as sacred cemetery for over a century, St. Paul regarded Indian Mounds Park as a recreational area. Now it's being recognized for its history as a cemetery for at least seven tribes. It says as far back as Samantha Odegaard can remember, Indian Mounds Park was an example of how sacred sites have been desecrated, in this case for people's recreation. And if you ask me, Minnesota doesn't do a very good job with these historical mound sites at all. There is a grand mound up on the border of Canada, a fascinating place, a huge mound with a tail or a serpent coming off the back of it that is just closed and totally disregarded, so that's too bad. It says Odegaard, a tribal historic preservation officer for the Upper Sioux community, helped the city of St. Paul, Minnesota conduct a cultural landscape study about Indian Mounds Park. She and three others looked at the history of the 82-acre area and interviewed people for, for information. Everything from identifying what was there, what's proper behavior and what's improper behavior to helping with the signage that's going up. And here you see a recently put up sign at the park. But I did a story on this. T.L. Lewis was the one who excavated a mound. He found one interesting burial, a large body with a mask over the face, just like a Mayan death mask. That was a pretty interesting one to do and there are certain links that are pretty hard to ignore between the mound builders the hopewell and they are responsible for these mounds maybe going back 2000 years but some interesting connections to the mayans for sure here's a video i did about six years ago showing what was here in 1898 on the bluff overlooking the mississippi river in st paul t.l lewis also found a triangular formation in one of the mounds made out of three large stones with a fire in the middle and that directly relates to the Mayan three hearthstone myths in Orion but here is the way it looked once upon a time in St. Paul I believe 1898 I guess it's nice Minnesota is finally recognizing this place for what it was after 120 plus years they knew exactly what it was in the 1800s when a very reputable archaeologist, T.L. Lewis, did work here. They knew this was an ancient burial ground, but now it's being recognized for what it is and some adjustments are being made to the way the park is handled. I guess that is good news. That is Indian Mounds Park overlooking the Mississippi in St. Paul. These mounds might go back 2,000 years, the Hopewell, probably the culture that was in here, but that'll take care of my ancient history news video five ancient history news stories from around the world might have another video coming up later tonight and i'll probably go live tomorrow evening again maybe have a beer and talk some ancient history with you folks i had fun doing that my first time i think tomorrow night will work out better for me than tonight hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very nice day